We are here with me at the airport right now. Looking a damn mess. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chloe. How are you guys? I just realized that it's um, only noon. I'm six hours early for my life. <laughs> but this is the only time that I have this Tuesday, so I figured that I would just um, do it now. Hello, everybody. Um, so um, I was just going to fill you guys in on um, the last couple weeks. So right now I'm in uh, Newark Airport and I'm here. Um, I'm about to go back to L.A. Hi, everybody. And <laughs> it's 10 p.m. for you, so thankful. <laughs> live from the airport hi natasha hello um so yeah i'm uh coming back from jersey right now coming back home it was so 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 needed um actually you know what i did i have my purse here i had a couple notes of some stuff that i did sorry it's too close um well natasha um since you're in jersey uh you really need to go to this indian temple that i that um is in robbinsville it is the most incredible thing. I'm so glad that I got to experience it. So one of the cool things about this is, um, I'm being kind of quiet, but I feel like you guys could hear me. Too bad I got stuck in the rain. Oh no, it's fine. Um, I think my flight is still, everything's happening normal. Um, but um, I'm really excited because uh, that Indian temple was amazing. It was like the coolest thing. Also, you can hear that I'm now getting sick. But uh, the coolest thing about this Indian temple was when you go inside, The it's so intricate that it really feels like when you look at Alex Gray painting or when you do psychedelics. So when you do psychedelics, you know, you kind of see these rings of eyes. <laughs> you can hear quiet voice, Jen. I know. I'm like really close to people too. They're like... A couple feet away from me oh it's on your bucket list for the summer oh my god you have to um, so it's so amazing because that's what I felt like when I first walked in first of all it's so grand it's so beautiful I've always been very connected to um, Hindu um, Hinduism. oh my god imagine they called my imagine they called my name right now <laughs> um, so, yeah, so basically, um, when you walk into this Indian temple, it is so beautiful, so incredible, and the intricacy and the layers, which is what makes it feel like an Alex Gray painting, and as I was in there, I kept feeling like this is the natural state of, like, the world, because, you know, when you take mushrooms, for example, you know how you see like patterns on like everything and sometimes there's kind of this like imprint of like eyes like a lot of times i'll see many eyes and they're kind of like not like you're completely hallucinating it it's like just an imprint like an imprint over what you're seeing in the 3d it's like in between you and the 3d that you're looking at there's these patterns of eyes and i see them kind of like i mean look out here <laughs> i'm really in the airport um, so the way that it's kind of like a pattern similar to the Alex Gray paintings, I think he, um, depicts it the best. Now, walking into that Indian temple, the carvings looked so much like that because it was circular like that and layers and each layer, it would be like, say, one Hindu God and then another and then another and another and they're all looking down on you so it kind of does have that similar what is it called um it it's in Robbinsville New Jersey and it's by the BAPS organization B-A-P-S I don't know if it's called BAPS that's just what it said so I might do it might be called B-A-P-S but it's probably maybe BAPS um and so it's also a bit of a controversial, um, India sounds like such a cool place, I know. I've always wanted to go, forever. When I was in high school, uh, I tried teaching myself Hindi, the language. It did not go well. I didn't get very far. I could only learn the curse words. So, um, yeah. When you're on the East Coast, it's so worth going for a day and checking it out. And also, the food is really good. 
like it has a like a food court cafe and because the whole thing is like non-profit everything's so affordable i actually got some i'll show you guys i they also sell like Ay ayurvedic um ayurvedic uh supplements there but because it's like not for profit they're like at cost so this was like five dollars for this great quality holy basil and i also got this other stuff that it tastes bad is there going to be a tuesday night live tonight this is the tuesday night live um because i'm going to be on a flight and um i'll probably end up deleting this later this is just for like people who um watch the lives and are going to be wondering where i've been but probably not going to keep this on my youtube because it's not really something that's evergreen like i don't want in like six months someone to come back and uh my leo self does not want my my look in a mess sound in a mess with my stuffed up nose i can't i would have to uh remove it but for you guys i'll be here but anyone who finds later no nah, it's not for them so this will be deleted but, um, so this trip that I'm here now, it was kind of last minute. It was kind of last minute and uh, it was really good. I really needed it badly. Uh, as you guys know, since Conscious Life Expo, I had not been right. Ever since that kid at Conscious Life Expo looked into my soul and I, the crying baby noises I know. And there's also like a Karen over here. And understandably why she's mad. Her flight has been delayed, but still, she's super annoyed. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. I had to come back to Jersey and New York to get grounded again. I really did because I was off. I was not feeling like myself. And you know, now I find, for the last, six weeks or so ever since conscious life expo it might be almost eight weeks now i have not felt myself and rightfully so because remember some of the stuff that i was talking about and if you read the sub stack you know that like also i was deconstructing all of these ideas of who i am what i like everything that has made me the person that i am and so even deconstructing those things is probably partly the reason why I didn't feel like myself. <laughs> Does LA feel that ungrounding? Um, it's not specifically LA. It was, you know, I have not stopped in like, I'm always doing something. I'm always going. <laughs> right, hopefully the baby's not next to me on the way home. Well, I was very supported in this. Um, I actually, my friends uh, bought my plane ticket and they bought me a first class plane ticket, which I haven't flown first class in so, 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 so long since the last time someone gifted me a ticket. <laughs> so that was really nice. So I think I'm gonna have a nice experience. I had a very good um, flight on the way here, but it really was, you know, and I, this, I needed my support system. I needed like people who didn't need anything for me, who people who could just, be supportive so like that's also why i've been i've been mia uh in a lot of things i text messages online with a lot of people in my life not that there's anything wrong with um that i just right now did not have the space to support anyone else you know i ever since conscious life expo i felt off and then and I know it, it's eclipse season. It was the end of the astrological year. It's the coming into, I know there's all these astrological things, but then also in the practicality, you know, when I had that experience at Conscious Life Expo, which really, I took myself to the very ultimate um, last bit of energy that I had. I went all the way. I know, it'll probably freeze, but you guys will still hear the baby and all the noise, sadly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so basically... Sorry. It's so loud. Um, no, it was kind of like an impromptu last-minute travel. Uh, my friend ended up getting me a ticket to come back home. Uh, 
quick summary of what happened at the expo. So the expo was great, and I did post about this in another video, and I did a po uh, wrote my Substack deep in depth about it. But basically, um, the thing that really, I was doing so much, I was doing stuff before and after, I did four days of the expo, so I really exhausted myself. But the main thing that I, the main thing that I had um, did at the expo, oh, you haven't seen the last two sub stacks yet. Um, so the class that we did was really cool. The Silva Method class was awesome. However, um, the one before that is the one about um, what happened at the expo, which basically, in a very short form, this kid, who I guess is like a seer or whatever, and he, I didn't do a session with him or anything, but when I locked eyes with this kid who was like 17 years old, I literally like saw this being on my left side towering over me in my like head I saw from a third person perspective that this giant like kind of wrathful this wrathful um, reptilian type of creature um, after that I was kind of jostled because then this thing that was on the side of me was actually kind of like my own trauma from childhood and so then I did a healing with my friend, and after that healing, we went to the core of like, basically like a soul fractal, like a part of my soul that broke off when I was a baby and has basically been living in like a loop of wrath and torment and like quarantined from me. And my friend, did a healing on me to integrate that back with me and first of all leading up to the two weeks from conscious life expo to the healing and then the two weeks after the healing i was just not feeling myself i first of all like never really had much anxiety as you guys know after the ayahuasca i started to experience some anxiety i do believe that the ayahuasca is the reason why this kind of layer of numbing that has been with me my whole life was kind of dissolved not completely just enough to start feeling anxiety and things that suck like that and then so then kind of seeing this wrathful type of being standing next to me and thankfully you know i have the i'm so sorry this the karen is using her phone on speakerphone you guys just went into my third eye um so Oh my god it's so loud it's such an old person thing to do to put the phone on speaker that way meanwhile i'm doing a whole fucking live over here silently okay um so but these are the things the small annoyances of life are what we're meant to experience right so um some allison says uh sounds like you're listening to your body consciousness and rest sometimes uh when we get run down we're actually receiving downloads and dna upgrades and that's a great point because uh, I'm obviously you can hear I'm getting uh, sick now and basically um, I saw Sarah Brexman Cosme's uh, post today about when you have a cold how actually you shouldn't try to fight the cold that it's, it's a lot of times it's upgrades it's downloads it's your body clearing stuff and to really just accept it and sometimes we get a cold because there's stuff happening in our body that um, needs time. So I 100% believe that. Um, I did still try fighting this cold and I'm pretty much, I feel like it's only gonna last like a day. I've only had it like kind of a little sniffles for like two days. Also what I've been doing is putting um, peroxide. You know, so they say you can clean out your sinuses with peroxide and water and gargle peroxide and water. And um, Oh, your grandma gets so mad when she's sick. I know, it's very frustrating to be... But um, doing that... So I didn't use like a nasal wash because I didn't have one. But what I'll do is I'll put a little tiny bit of um, peroxide with water on a Q-tip and just clean inside my nostrils. And it really like prevents the, the sickness kind of from building in your nose. Because when you have a cold or sickness, it builds up inside of your nose and inside of your throat. So if you can clean the inside of your nose and inside of your throat, it can't really develop to the full sickness. Sometimes even too, if you like are feeling a little bit off or you've been in like maybe around a lot of kids or something or people who might like get you sick, um, it, you could do like a little like gargling of like 
a little bit of peroxide with water, hot, I use hot water. Um, and that really helps. So, um, say hi, Chloe. <laughs> Um, we have two Chloe's here, Chloe with a K and Chloe with a C. Uh, so to put peroxide in your ear. Oh, hi, Shauna. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I did put it in my ear as well. I got it at every angle. I was like, I got the nose, throat, and so it's pretty much done. Um, is 46 days too soon to tell someone you love them? I think it really depends on the situation. Um, it's hard to say. 46 days could be too soon for some people, but then at the same time, 46 days um, could be, you know, the right amount of time. So this is very interesting. It's a very interesting chat today, but I know I'm also here on a different time right now, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God, I need to randomly go live more often on YouTube because these comments are so funny. Okay. <laughs> That's so hilarious. Okay. So, um, anyway, so ever since I did that healing on, um, a couple weeks ago, then I had been feeling really off. I had been feeling really off. Okay, this person's gonna get banned now. Goodbye. So um, after that, I just felt like not grounded, not myself, and uh, it was pretty good to come back and, um, you know, be grounded with, you know, I saw my sister and then, you know, my sister, um, okay, I thought I blocked this person. Oh, right. Now I think they're gone. So, um, so basically after that, I was, um, you know, I was not feeling right. And I know that's normal because you're kind of deconstructing your own identity. So it does make sense why I didn't feel like myself. But then I really needed to come back home, see my family, and, uh, oh my God, these people are really out of control today, guys. You know, this has never happened in our chat on, um, this has never happened in our chat on a Tuesday night live. Interesting, <laughs> right? I'm shocked. So, who are these people? So basically, um, Oregano oil is a good antioxidant. It is true. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Oh no. I think I've muted the wrong person, I'm sorry. Wow. Sorry if anyone got caught in the crossfire. Okay. So basically, you know, I am, uh, you know, dealing with reconstructing my identity in that way. So it was like good to be back with my sister. My sister, um, she does Reiki. So it was nice that I was able to do Reiki while I was here, but then also cool because my sister has um, a bunch of tuning forks and sound bowls and stuff. So, oh my God, you guys are worse than TikTok. This is like TikTok with a lower IQ. Okay. These comments. I don't know. We gotta figure this Wow. I hope they can still see that they're <laughs> Well, this was just gonna be a quick check-in anyway. Oh hi Emma. Thank you for the super chat. You're so sweet. Oh I can actually like it for once because usually when I use my computer I have a different software. The audience just doubled, I know, and they're all trolls. So, um, but thank you guys for being here. The OGs, the real ones. And um, am I a man? Uh, no, I'd probably be doing much better in life if I was. <laughs> I definitely would have more money if I was. <laughs> so, um, 
so it's been really good because then it was funny. My brother came to visit, and my brother is like, uh, he brought the Oculus, and so we've been working on creating kind of like a JK Ultra space in the Oculus because we wanted he wanted to create a bar, like we want to call it Orion's in the metaverse, and then it's like a place where people can meet up, like a JK Ultra lounge, and so he had been building that, and then. Finally, I got to see it today because, um, well, the other day when I saw him, because he brought the two pair, two Oculuses, so I was able to like see it. And oh my God, first of all, the Oculus is crazy. Like the Oculus is crazy because um, he basically uh, created this space, which is like a bar that we have in the metaverse. But unfortunately it um, was too big. And you know what's weird? When you're in the metaverse and the, re the, the bar that he created was way too big. And so you have to kind of walk a long way to the, and even though I wasn't walking, you were stationary, but just using the joystick, walking your avatar through, because it feels so immersive, you really feel exhausted after, like as if you um, walked that distance. It's almost like your brain feels like you actually walked that far. So the first time I went in the Oculus, I could only last like 15 minutes. And then when I did the Oculus again, um, I could only last for um, a JK Ultra Metaspace would be funny. I know. It was really cool. Uh, I do want to get an Oculus. I'm broke, so um, I can't get one now. But I do want to get one because my brother created that place. And when I came in, I had like mine on. And I was like, oh, no, no, we need to put the sign here. We need to bring the bathrooms around to the back. I'm like, no, 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 we don't want the bathrooms near the entrance. So I was like coming in like as if I was like some real estate developer in the metaverse. Like I was like, oh, no, no, no. this is not the, vi the definition that I was um, in for. And it's so funny when people say something like, oh, you lost me. Sir, I wish I would lose you. Please get lost. I beg of you, lose yourself. <laughs> I always hate that comment when people are like, oh, you lost me. I'm like, then go, please get out, get lost. Um, so, um, oh, there he goes. At least he left. Um, okay, so you recommend the Quest 2 with the P PC connection. Um, I don't have a PC, I have a Mac. Uh, but my brother has two of the um, Oculuses. So he has like the newest one and the one right before. And the quality is significantly different. But once you're in the old one for like three minutes, you already just become Im like into it, immersed in it. But I also went to a Doja Cat concert in the metaverse because there's concert halls. So I went to a Doja Cat concert. There was a little pink alien dancing there. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I can't wait to play Fortnite. I'm not really a game person uh, in that way. So I don't think I'll ever play Fortnite. Um, I doubt that I'll ever do that. Is it VR chat? Um, so it's interesting because you can actually go into a bar. They have these bars in the metaverse and then you can meet other people there. So it's really funny because like, I, it was tripping me out because you can't see Jen playing Fortnite. I know, I don't know if I could. Like, honestly, the Oculus was a lot for me. But so there was, okay, Grace, enough is enough. Bye-bye. I know, isn't it so funny? You're welcome to the Shrooms in VR would be fun. Honestly, it feels like that already. It feels really overwhelming. I should, should I start doing my lives earlier? <laughs> I feel like, I'm like, wow, look at all these randoms coming in here. So, um, no, it's crazy because the first time I went in the VR, I could only do like 15 minutes before I started to feel nauseous. Then I did it again. I could stay like 25, 30 minutes. And then I was able to do like 45 minutes. And what's so weird is that if you go in, um, you said it'll fix your sleep schedule. Um, so if you go, oh good, um, the Karen got her situation fixed. It looks like she's good now. Um, so... Okay, <laughs> Diddy, P. Diddley, that's funny, P. Diddler. Um, so 
then, I mean, a lot has happened, right? This, this P. Diddy stuff happened in the last week, which, you know, I usually don't, oh, you're saying you think the Oculus would make you feel sick. It does make you feel sick. Like, I would start to know when I was almost done. When it would get to a certain point, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to get out now because I'm about to, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Uh, what's my favorite restaurant? I don't know, get um, Mediterranean food. Uh, so in the metaverse, they have these bars that are 18 plus or 21 plus, but they can't really fully age verify. So you can't keep yourself muted. So they want everyone to unmute you or they'll kick you out of the space. So in one of these places, it's called like Gatsby's or something. And so there's like a little fire pit. You go to the fire pit, there's a bunch of people sitting there talking, like as if it's a bar and they're hitting on each other. So then um, it was really funny because, um, you know, people, they, they have to keep you unmuted because then they have to see if your voice is a kid's voice. And then everybody in the group votes to like kick you out of this space. And so now I didn't have my own avatar. I was using my brother's boyfriend. So um, I was inside, my brother's boyfriend is, you know, a grown man. And so I was, my avatar was a man's body and, but it was my voice. And, um, oh wow, oh my God, Shauna, thank you. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Wow, thank you, aww. All right, we're gonna continue with our priority group. That is first class, you Shauna, you're the best, I appreciate you so much. Okay, so now I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna build my space in the metaverse. So, then, um, I, they asked me to unmute myself, and I said, uh, hello, and then they tried to kick me out because it was a man's avatar, but with my voice, and they're like, you sound like a kid, and I'm like, I'm just a 35-year-old woman in a man's body, please. <laughs> You guys are really something in these chat today, huh? Thank you guys. Thanks, Shauna. You're so sweet. Um, but it was so funny because um, I was like, I promise you, I am not a child. It, you just think I sound like a child. It's a single guy and girl changing the counseling. What is this? Where are these people coming from? I feel like I'm live on 4chan right now. This is the weirdest um, live that we've ever done here. Um, but I think I need to do these more. <laughs> so, um, no, please shut up. So that was cool. Um, I'm so excited. I'm gonna get my own Oculus and then I can uh, create a little bar for us to go hang out there. And then, um, let's see, what else did I do this week? Um, I basically, I was, I really just needed to be, I spent a lot of time with my uh, friends, Jim and Nikki. And um, is this normal? No, this is absolute, Allison, this has never happened before. Everything that's happening right now has never happened in this life before. <laughs> How old am I? I'm 35. Is that what it is? Is it the airport, live at the airport? <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. What is an Oculus? An Oculus is um, for the metaverse. It's a headset for the metaverse. It's really something, these comments, you guys. This is wild. I've never experienced this here. Um, so it was really good. I had a great time. Also, I was here um, uh, with Jim and Nikki. So you guys know who follow, you know, Jim Norton, the comedian, is my ex-boyfriend, and his wife, Nikki. Um, they have a podcast and YouTube channel. So I was here, I did some, well, they're starting their podcast, so I did an uh, episode of their podcast with them, which was great. That was fun. I love them. You know, they're family to me, so uh, a lot of people are like, 
how are you so close with your ex-boyfriend and also how are you so close with your ex-boyfriend's wife and i'm like oh we're a family like i'll be hanging out with them all the time uh so i've been doing that as well which was nice so like a bunch of these nights I was just like hanging out with them at their house we did the podcast together but that's also like my support system too you know like Jim has been in my life for like 17 years or something like that or like 15 years or whatever it is and so um we've been broken up for like I don't know maybe 13 12 years or something like that <laughs> you said I'm your ex-boyfriend's wife fight me um I'm super cool with my ex-boyfriend's wife. Um, she's one of my close friends. Uh, are, am I a tourist? No, I'm in my, basically kind of my hometown. I grew up in Jersey City and I am going back to my home in Los Angeles. You will retire me. I don't know, start sending the money then if you want me to retire. <laughs> uh, it's your birthday today. Oh, hi, Lily. Happy birthday. What happened to my German Gaia crush? Um, he's a fraud. Sorry to tell you. Uh, <laughs> and thank God. Thank God I found out when I did. You're from Iran. What time is it in Iran? Yeah. Um, how old am I? I'm 35. Oh, oof, not a fraud. <laughs> um, yeah. And also the other thing too is, the other thing that came up this week was um, Andrew Huberman. And I've been fucking lit up on this Andrew Huberman topic because this dude, Andrew Huberman, he's supposed to be talking, he does all this stuff about like being your best self, excellence, being like um, doing the cold plunges and the sauna and the brain reprogramming and this and that, and all about this protocol, protocol for um, excellence, basically living the best life that you can, striving for excellence in every area of your life, and then, this guy there is a um why did i break up with my ex-boyfriend oh we broke up so many years ago right so what yeah whether it's product and um so basically andrew huberman he was leading he had a girlfriend of like six years that was exclusive with him <laughs> and then he was doing ivf with her he did four rounds of ivf but had all of these other girlfriends that he was leading on at the same time. And what's ridiculous is that these guys who strive for excellence in every aspect of their life can compartmentalize the way they treat women. So they can see themselves on the pedestal of like, I eat the best, my macros, my temperature when I sleep, my intake of uh, this and that, no gluten, uh, only eating elk meat. Uh, the, the repra reprogramming your brain, all of this stuff. However, you can't see that lying and cheating on your partner with five other partners doesn't align with everything that you're saying and who you think you are. And also, if you need five girlfriends, cut the, cut the cold plunges. The cold plunges aren't fucking working, right? Like, the cold plunges don't fucking work and also the impulse control a lot of people you never heard of him good natasha don't hear of him don't hear of him um i only liked him i only liked him because i saw him on um lex friedman but um even that too then lex friedman defends him basically saying like oh he's a great guy sager from uh breaking points who i also really like came out defending him the free press who I also really like, um, came out defending him. And these like three outlets that I really appreciate their perspective, they didn't have to defend him. They could feel that way personally, but why? Mm-hmm. 
Mm, that his science is misleading. Oh, I turn racing. How are you? Um, so basically, it's like this guy can compartmentalize this. Then it's like, then what is it with these guys? Because Andrew Huberman is the same as most of these guys in the spiritual community because I've met so many of these guys. Um, I will not name names at this time, but knock yourself out guessing because you're probably right. Um, these people will talk about excellence. They'll talk about like the new earth, spirituality, talk about twin flame shit. It's the same thing like Andrew Huberman talking about all of these like higher levels of consciousness, oneness, all of that. But then they lead on like 10 different women and they got a girlfriend that they won't even admit is their girlfriend while they lead on five other girls and while they, uh, you know, need all these different people. So it's like, it's just really sad to me. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say Aubrey Marcus. As far as I know, he's very good with his girlfriend, Vil Vilana. And I swear to God, if he cheats on her, I'm burning down the whole world. Because if there's any guy out there that wants to be faithful in that position, then, um, you know, but this is the thing, like, it's a grift, I know, it's sad, it's sad that these people do this, that they literally will use these concepts like, uh, oneness, uh, raising of consciousness, uh, ascension, all of that stuff, but really what it comes down to is it's like, oh, cute baby. And then it really just comes down to like, they're just doing it for, for bitches. They just want the bitches. I can't take it. The spiritual grift is a perfect way to say it. And you know what someone told me about one of these guys um, that we all know of? Uh, it's spiritual grooming. It's an aspect of grooming because you're manipulating people using your level of like acting like you have higher spiritual knowledge to get them to basically, you know, uh, fawn over these people so that these people can feed off of it. They be teaching everyone but themselves, it's true. And like, and that's why like the Andrew Huberman thing really pissed me off because a lot of people are like, are like, well, a lot of people are like, who cares? Um, it's his personal life. If it was like he was e &M, ethical non-monogamy or poly or a swinger, no, that's your life. Do whatever you want. If if you're being honest, then that is your personal life. But if you're lying, deceiving, making a woman go through IVF, and this is the part that set me over the edge, is that in that article, his spokesman, his spokesman is probably him, his spokesman uh, said that basically, um, he when he was, because obviously he's trying to downplay his relationship. However, they did four rounds of IVF. And those four rounds of IVF, his spokesperson said, oh, we weren't trying to make a baby. Then why were you doing the IVF? He said, we weren't trying to make a baby. We were just creating embryos. Why the fuck are you creating embryos? So you can pay a freezer storage fee? What? Why would you create an embryo to not make a baby? That doesn't make sense or to eventually make a baby. So the fact that he was saying that completely downplaying the relationship that he was in and also the girl was with him uh, for like six years and caught HPV during that time. And then his spokesperson said um, he never tested positive for HPV. Meanwhile, men cannot be tested for HPV and he's supposed to be a scientist. Yeah, how do you say liar without saying liar exactly? Do I think Amber Heard's baby is Elon's? Yes, I do. I do. Because I do have mm, some insight into that situation. I do believe that's the um, thing. Yeah, that's the weirdest defense ever. Exactly. That's the thing, is it's so dumb that these people could say, meaning like these men in these positions really could say something so dumb and then all of these other men just pick it up. Have I ever broken a bone? Yes. Yep, God complex, you're right. Who the hell is just creating embryos? That's insane. Creating embryos? That is bizarre to me. 
Who is the person that everybody is in the chat saying is saying something? I think I missed them. Oh, I see. They're gone now. Um, yeah, you know, that's it's really disappointing because he really is striving for excellence. And, you know, a lot of women are looking for men like that. You know, they're looking for men that do have all the different uh, qualities. You guys want to talk about Diddy? Okay. We're going to get close for this, though, because now we're about to say the crazy stuff. <laughs> Someone said, do you hate God? <laughs> These questions today, um, they're hilarious. So, um, okay, so Diddy, um, I've been on that all week. Did you guys watch Sloan Bella? Because Sloan Bella is a psychic. Oh, <laughs> the baby's so cute. So, look at this. This is us right here. Um, so, Tiffany Longman, Jess Longman, Ivan Castro. Jerome, Stan, Jacqueline, Erin, and... Mm, Sloan Bella. She predicted it all. Yeah, okay, so the Sloan Bella stuff. So I was never really into Sloan Bella, even though a lot of people told me to watch her because of my John Bonet series. When I broke down the John Bonet stuff, uh, a lot of people kept saying like, oh my God, this is the same thing that Sloan Bella talks about. So I had never watched her stuff. Now... Nine months ago, in June, it was June 3rd and 4th, she did two videos. And so she is a um, psychic reader and she was also does mediumship with people who have passed on. So she tapped into Kim Porter, who is Diddy's ex. Um, Sloan Bella is a psychic on YouTube. And she did a video where she channeled um, P. Diddy's baby mama. Because I don't think he was ever married to Kim Porter. It was his ex-girlfriend. And so what's funny, well, not funny, um, what's interesting is in 2018, I was managing a restaurant and it was Diddy's like 50th birthday or something. So we closed down the restaurant to celebrate. And I mean, you know, they rented out the place and we hosted it and did the food and everything. And so who's Diddy? P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. And uh, so, sorry. So that was in November of 2018. It was his like 50th birthday or something like that. And then his um, ex Kim Porter was there, and she was so nice. Everybody loved her. The bartenders loved her. And then a couple like within two weeks, she died. And then there was this story that she was gonna put out a book about P. Diddy being gay or something like that. And that was like the rumors that were circulating. And she ended up, uh, she passed away two weeks after that party that we all saw her there. Um, but I don't think I actually worked the party. I don't remember if I actually was there or if I just, um, I can't remember if I worked that party because there's so many. Uh, sorry, it's loud. So, then she, Sloan Bella, in June of last year, did a, nine months ago, did a reading where she channels Kim Porter, and then she does another reading the next day, where she can't channels Kim Porter again. Um, well, you know, Sierra, I think that that's not the actual story. It's not actually about being gay. It's about the gay stuff that these people do and it's not about sexuality and this is what Sloan Bella was talking about Sloan Bella was saying that and she put it so eloquently um it is she put it so so eloquently that basically our what is happening in the mu music industry is a ritualistic rite of passage I know now it got super quiet when I started talking about the sodomy rituals, figures. Um, so basically she's talking about um, it's ritualistic sodomy, which is like, you know what I'm saying? That's why people say gay stuff, but it's not gay sexuality. It is a rite of passage. So basically kind of like an indoctrination, basically 
an initiation. So what she says is that when people do this rite of passage, which we hear about, this Illuminati stuff that we've heard about forever, that basically, um, yeah, someone's saying Justin Bieber, a lot of people saying Usher too, Usher. And this is also too, like, um, why was it normal for 15 year old Usher to be staying over Diddy's house? Why, why was it normal for Justin Bieber at 14 years old to be sleeping over Diddy's house? Why was it normal? for Michael Jackson to have all these young boys sleeping over his house. What is the normalcy in this stuff? And so what happens is, what, the way that Sloan Bella put it, is that this is a rite of passage. And that makes sense, because a lot of times it's put as like, not as clear as that. And basically in order to go to the next level, this is a way of energy harnessing. This is what's coming from her videos. I'm not saying 100% that this is the truth. I'm repeating what she said, and the way that she put it was a very eloquent way of the way that she had um, explained something that we all talk about. We all talk about this kind of Illuminati stuff, but she put it really well. And what she said is that these type of people, uh, they chase riches. So they chase, they chase the diamonds and the purses and the money and the attention and the fame because these are valuables. But what is the most valuable thing? Soul, energy, pure soul energy, an unfractaled soul, an unbroken soul, miners. And this also explains why for the last 10,000 years there's been stories about sacrificing virgins, right? And so, this has been in our history forever. Like all these books that we know of the past talk about sacrificing virgins and stuff. And she explained that this is the most valuable thing in the world is the pure energy of children, of young people, of innocence, of, you know, say something with artistry like music, like a pure young talent. This is very pure. And she says that when they do this ritualistic rite of passage, it's a way that they almost get to wear that pure energy as a mask. They get to wear that. It's a harnessing and like a stealing of someone's innocence. And they get to almost, and what she said is the reason why um, we look at these people, and of course, probably not us. I think a lot of the people who like me and probably a lot of people who like my stuff, um, a lot of the people who like my stuff, they, um, oh no. Oh no. I, un I hid the wrong person. No. Natasha, I'm sorry. I was muting someone else. I think I undid it. No, please come back. <laughs> How do I go back? Okay. Well, I think Natasha, are you gone? Oh no, RIP. I can't. No, my finger slipped. Oh, sorry. I gotta figure out how to fix it. Um, damn it. So these people, they use this energy as a mask. And she says like, you know, these people are not more talented. They're not more special. They're not more this, they're not more that. What it is, is that they're wearing this mask of this energy. Poor Natasha, I know, how do we go back? Can I see? Super chat, live chat, top chat, oops. Okay, chat options, top chat. Oh, sad. <laughs> no, I'm sure Natasha can hear it, we just can't hear her. She didn't get blocked. They just got muted in the chat and I don't know how to unmute it. No. Oh, darn. So what was someone's question? Is it related to the political stuff? Um, probably the same type of rite of passage could be happening. You wanna see her video? Okay, so I was talking about Sloane Bella. Um, she's on YouTube. Okay, so this is the last thing I'll tell you guys. We love you, Natasha. <laughs> um, so this is what Sloane Bella was talking about. So in, this is the good part that I, we need to finish on because I'm, I'm about to start boarding my plane in any minute. So we, so basically she says that um, in her video in June of 
June 3rd, 2023. She's like, hmm, I'm getting a message. She's like, Kim Porter is telling me that Diddy's going down. She said, wait, Diddy's going down on November 15th of 2023. She gives the exact date, November 15th, 2023. November 16th of 2023 was um, the day that Cassie came out against him. And the stuff with Cassie is crazy. The stuff with Cassie is absolutely insane. It is so horrible. And so um, she was saying, wow, I'm getting a message that November 15, 2023, a marching band, music, someone's leading the march. Who came out? The first one to come out was Cassie. She was mu a musician and she's leading the march against him. Well, then she did another video after Cassie came out. I know, poor Cassie, the story is so sad. It is absolutely devastating what he did to her. Now, when Cassie came out in uh, November, Sloan Bella did another video contacting Kim Porter. And so this video, she says, mm, I'm getting March. She's like, March 2024? She's like, wait, Easter week? Easter weekend? She's like, wait, is Diddy gonna be a sacrificial lamb on Easter week? That video was five months old. And she said, Easter week, that is the day they raided his house. So then I went back and watched her Notorious B.I.G. video where she channeled Biggie. And she said, Biggie showed her, uh, we need a Sloan Bellow in our lives. <laughs> so then she channeled Biggie and Biggie showed her that P. Diddy had fangs with blood and she said, he's a devil. And then she said, oh, he's telling me in four years he's going down. The video is four years old, four years old. I'm like, hold on. She really did. So if you guys want to watch that, um, it's the Kim Porter video. There's three Kim Porter videos. The two are back to back. Then um, the B.I.G. video. So that was very interesting. Okay, well. Uh, all right, Abdul had to be blocked too. So um, not the devil, a devil. Yeah, I wonder. I think Diddy will go down, but I think it's going to take a while because, you know, when you have a lot of money, it's easy to keep yourself out of jail during that time. Because look at someone like Danny Masterson and all of these people uh, were free for all of these years. Oh, you randomly just saw Sloan. Now you need to go follow her. Oh, she's... So what's funny about Sloan is when you watch her lives, they're chaotic, which mine is chaotic right now. So... Um, that's funny, but then her videos that are channeled are so grounded and so good. So it's fun to kind of bounce back and forth because in some of the videos, she's like very erratic and she'll be like, like telling the chat to shut up. But then in other videos, she's so grounded and like giving such good information. It's so funny. You said you wonder how many other celebs, ha celebs have those con skeletons in their closet. I think a lot. I think a lot. Um... Yes, I do think a lot. I really hope that Natasha's not banned forever from the chat. We're going to have to rectify this situation. This was sad. It was a great loss today. Um, <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you for being here for this weird and chaotic um, chat today where we just talked about a little bit of stuff. Shauna. Aircraft just came in. We are starting to our the cleaning process. Once those guests come off the aircraft, and the aircraft is clean, your crew gets on, and you got safety checks. We will begin our boarding Aww. process. There'll be just a slight delay for our boarding. Thank you, everybody. Um, um this was a lot of fun. This was, I should do more like impromptu random lives like this because these are actually also pretty fun and chaotic. Um, <laughs> Yeah, someone said you're probably not allowed to be a celebrity unless you pay along. I think it's a little different now. And I do know a lot of celebrities, but you don't reach the Lady Gaga, Pete Diddy status. You know, it's not saying everybody is because there's so many people that are just normal people um, that are celebrities and they really are just normal. But it's really like, I wonder with the very, very, very high levels. Like if you're worth $900 million, you know, that's different than like someone who's worth maybe like three to five million dollars or ten million dollars you know from their movies or something like that 
So they steal the energy, but they also create them in their own image. Do they still have something to draw from them? Uh, I'm not sure um, about what the create them in their own image means. Do they still have something to draw from them? Well, these people, you know, they continue to harness the energy of that person over time, too. Are you nervous when you're live? No. Um, it was normal, but I'm just here in the airport off to the side. Oh, I'm glad you guys like this because this was super weird and chaotic and all of that. Yeah, someone saying like Beyonce status, exactly. Now say someone like Good Beyonce. She could be a victim. A lot of people. Okay. Well. You think her reputation is squeaky clean? I've definitely heard stuff, but who knows? I'm not in any of those airports. Mm -mm -mm. I'm in Newark. I know. Jessica, you're right. That's the name that everybody's saying is coming next. But Sloane Bella says three years for him. So go watch. She did a video on Jay-Z, too. She said it'll be three years before he gets um, kind of exposed. So we'll see. Oh, it's a little too clean. Who knows what they're hiding? Oh, right. You said she killed that girl and stole, stole her identity. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you guys. Um, love you, and I will see you uh, next time at probably my regular location again. Bye, everybody. And Shauna, thank you so much for the super chat. And Emma, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Don't you say that about my Jim Carrey. I love him.